All right, guys, it is Sunday night, and that means it was Sunday night, January the 5th, 2020, and it is the very first Sunday night service of 2020. I am so excited. I'm Danny Williamson from Integrative Family Medicine. Dr. Motley's not here right now. Uh, he's, I don't, I'm not quite sure where he is, but he'll be back actually in a few weeks. Uh, we're going to talk, but um as you guys get logged on, hit your heart buttons, hit your like buttons, share it. That's what I was doing just then. Share it, um, start a watch party, all that, because we are talking detox tonight. Detoxification, not just the 10-day detox, okay? We're talking about what is your body doing at detox, what, detoxes? What have you done as little life hacks to detox your own life and your family and your environment and your cleaning supplies and your lotion and your makeup and all that. We're going to touch on that slightly because as I learned today when I shared on our Facebook community, what are some of your favorite um, things that you've done to clean up? Oh my gosh, there's a million different things. So I think what I'm going to try to do is convince my friend Mary Chubinko to do, If and if you want that, hit your heart buttons for this. Um, we're going to do a whole Sunday night service on just products, beauty products, cleaning supplies, everything, everything. If you're interested in that, hit your heart buttons, hit your like buttons. But tonight we are talking detox and what does it mean, right? This is a new year. It's 2020. 2019 was 365 days long, the same length of every other year out there. And I'm always, people always say, oh, I'm so ready for the year to be over. You know, yeah. Me too. My year was going along beautifully until about June 23rd, 2019. And when my, my mom ended up in the ICU and then the dementia, the, you know, all the things that happened there. And yeah, it was a hard year, but every year is hard. You know, people die every year. People get sick every year. We have great births and weddings and we have funerals and we have setbacks and we lose our job and we get new jobs and we, you know, we get into financial trouble and things happen. That's life. It happens every year. Um, you can handle those things better when your body is on its A game and not necessarily detox. It does have to detox on its own, but when you're on your A game, you can handle these things better, right? When you're eating better, sleeping better, moving better, pooping better, decreasing the stress in your life and having community, you can actually manage life better because you know what life is hard people and it's not always perfect it's not always a bed of roses somebody told me that they said yeah well roses have um thorns on them yeah they sure do so anyway mary chubinko's on here if you want her to do a sunday night service with me boy fly up those heart buttons because she is a guru one of my favorites when it comes to knowing about what you put on your skin and what you put on your body. So, all right, guys. So what is the detox program? Actually, let me turn off my sound here. If you can still hear me, hit your heart buttons. You know, what is a detox program? Well, your body, your liver, a metabolic, metabolic detox program helps detox your body from the inside out. Detoxes your liver, your kidney, your lungs, your GI tract, your gut, all those things, right? What it does is a metabolic detox program just simply normalizes your body's ability to do what it should do anyway, naturally, right? to process and excrete toxins while temporarily reducing the amount of incoming toxins. That's all a detox program is. I mean, it's, it's as simple as that. It's really like a balancing act. It's like keeping homeostasis in your body. Mary, everybody wants you on to do a Sunday night service. So what a metabolic detox does, it focuses on helping the liver do the job of metabolizing and detoxifying the body. Right? It uses amino acids and proteins to help support the detoxification pathways. For those of you that know me, I have done this 10-day Ultra Clear Renew Detox for 10 years. This detox has been around for about 25, 26 years. I think it's the best detox on the program. I mean, on the on the market. There are other ones out there, so I'm not promoting this tonight. Saying you have to do this detox. I just want your body to be able to detox. On its own and if you need a little help I generally drink the detox and this is the detox shake right here 
I drank the detox shake about four times a week and just to keep my body gently detoxing because this has all the nutrients in it which we'll talk about which help your liver work you know the liver has over 500 functions in our body 500 i mean that's unbelievable two of the 500 functions are to play a major role in the detoxification and elimination process and it does that through phase one phase two phase three liver detox and we're going to talk about that Basically, your liver, which is four pounds, it's over here on the right, it weighs about four pounds, right? It's a big blood filter. It filters two liters of blood every single minute go through this liver right here. Two liters of blood go through it. It gathers up most of the chemicals, gastrointestinal byproducts, medications, environmental toxins, and general waste products from our normal metabolic detox processes in our body. It got all of that goes through the liver, that four pound liver, it's one of the largest organs in the body, but has a lot of things that it has to do. It also stores vitamins and minerals to be used at during the detox process, your natural detox process. I'm not talking about during your 10 day detox or excuse me, 21 day or 28 day detox. A detoxification program is, oh my gosh, vastly different than a cleanse. And I tell patients every day, people say, oh, I did your cleanse. No, you didn't. I don't offer a cleanse in the office. I do not offer a cleanse. A cleanse, I equate to kind of like a street sweeper. In your, You know how street sweepers just go down the street? I was in New York City last weekend and I saw street sweepers everywhere. Well, they don't do anything. They don't clean anything up. They just literally sweep the streets and they push things from side to side. And that's how I think a cleanse is. A cleanse rests the gut and that's a good thing, right? It's a good thing to rest the gut, give the body a little bit of a break, but it's really not detoxifying much. And it depends on what kind of cleanse. There's lots of cleanses out there, different juice cleanses and things. I mean, you could be loaded with a juice cleanse with sugar in it. I'm a, but so I, I'm not a huge fan of cleanses. I don't know. A two or three day cleanse would be, would be all right every now and then just to kind of rest the gut, but it's not a detoxification program. A detoxification program removes the, the nutrients that you need, you know, the makes the fat soluble um, toxins into water soluble so that you can actually excrete them through the skin and the gut and the bowel and the urine and things like that. We have a tremendous amount of literature and it's growing every single month of literature that suggests there's an association between toxin exposure and chronic conditions and the root cause of chronic conditions such as chronic fatigue uh, syndrome, multiple chemical sensitivities, fibromyalgia, heart disease, right? I mean, your symptoms can go anywhere from like in the bed chronic fatigue to things like joint pain and arthralgias and just hurting and mine is always joint pain right here in the hands and i'm having a lot of pain lately and i can't figure out what it is cognitive dysfunction right um these are just a few of the things that are associated with with uh toxic buildup it is estimated that we have over now listen to this people we have over eighty thousand chemicals in the environment that we can potentially be exposed to, 80,000. I was watching a webinar today by Deanna Minnick, who's part of Metagenics. She said, Iceland is about the cleanest, closest place that we have to being toxin free. I've never been to Iceland, Jackson's been. He said it was like nothing he's ever seen. So, you know, we're not Iceland over here. So we're Middle Tennessee and, and all the other places that are watching, but, you know, 80,000 chemical toxins that we can be exposed to. Where in the world are all these toxins coming from, right? Where? Um, air pollution, huge. Food supply, that's a gigantic one. Drinking water, that's a huge one, right? In addition to just things that touch the skin, right? Your lotion, your makeup, your, your uh, shampoo, your conditioner, your deodorant, your all those things, all the things that you put on your skin. Studies have identified there's an association between Parkinson's disease and prolonged exposure to pesticides through farming or through drinking well water. 
There's also a uh, correlation between Parkinson's disease and proximity and residence to industrial plants. So how far do you live from an industrial plant? Printing plants or quarries, rock quarries, or chronic occupational exposure to manganese, copper, or a combination of lead and iron. That's Parkinson's disease. I find it difficult to believe that Alzheimer's, brain cancer, dementia, other neurological conditions are not associated with living close to places like that. I grew up in a very toxic part of Western Kentucky with a uranium plant in Paducah. We had every stinking chemical plant known to man in Calvert City, literally five minutes from my house. And we had a paper plant in Waco. Waco? No, w Wingo. No, where's that place? I, well, my gosh, I used to smell it all the time. Anyway, anyway, it's... Uh, um, well, that's going to drive me nuts. Anyway, I had a paper plant. We had all kinds of toxins going on in Western Kentucky. So it's really important that I drink my detox shake out of a uh, metal straw. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here we go. What are some common classes of toxins? Now, we're not going to dig deep into this 10-day detox tonight. And here's the reason. I have two videos Sunday night services. They're both on YouTube under Danny Williamson Wellness 2 that dig into the deep, dark recesses of detoxification. One I did by myself and one I did with Dr. Motley. So, and it breaks down all the different pathways and all that. So you guys can watch those. There are plenty of them. I'll link them up here, but they're all on there. We're just talking, going over the basics tonight, getting you guys motivated, ready to clean up some things for 2020, whether you do a detox program or you're just going to clean up some of your household things. So what are some common classes of toxins? Industrial chemicals and combustion pollutants, okay? This is one of the largest categories of toxicants out there. Virtually everyone is exposed to hydrocarbons such as PCBs at some level during the average day. Pesticides. Most pesticides are in some way toxic to human beings, okay? So we have industrial chemicals, pesticides, endocrine disruptors, right? Common endocrine disruptors include phthalates, which are found in plastics, all the different plastics, right? PCBs, bisphenol A, some pesticides, synthetic steroids in meat, and we're actually going to dig a little deeper into that, DDT, as well as others. Biologists have long noted, we have lots of research on the correlation between sterility, right, being sterile, and malformation of the sex organs in many animal species that have been linked to the presence of contaminants in the environment. When I start, when I give you some, some statistics over here, you guys are going to be horrified. Toxic heavy metals, right, lead, mercury cadmium, arsenic, all the other toxic metals out there are extremely dangerous. And the problem with the heavy metals is they are delayed in your body. They build up. It's not like it happens overnight. They build up in the bones, in the liver, in the fatty tissues. And so they're often delayed because of what they do is they accumulate in the body. They hide in the body. Lead, get this, listen to this. Lead can be sequestered, hidden in the bones, replacing calcium. So sucking calcium out of the bones. Lead gets into the bones, replaces calcium where it's half-life. The half-life of lead is 62 years, 62 years in your body. But that's the half-life of it. Lead toxicity includes DNA damage a depressed immune system, anemia, hypertension, kidney disease, increased tooth decay. So if all of a sudden you start having like tons and tons of cavities, now it's not always lead toxicity, but it could be. You need to think about it. Persistent organic pollutants, another toxin, another class of toxins out there. Um, what these are, these are organic compounds that are carbon-based, they don't break down. They don't break down in our animals. There's a huge study on organ meat and POPs and the POPs that are in your organ meat, in the, in, in the meat, I'm sorry, in the organs of the animals that you're eating. 
and in the tissues of the animals you're eating. DDT, PCB, these are all considered persistent organic pollutants. I suggest you look this up. I read a whole lot on it this afternoon and I was horrified actually. You know, you can get it through air. It's gonna, it can transmit as well through air and water, okay? Food additives, food preservatives, and drugs. These are all classes of toxins and things that build up in our body and we become toxic. The greatest toxin exposure of all by far is the oral intake by mouth, right? The oral intake of drugs, water, and food containing toxic substances that can be absorbed in the GI tract. Well, you're only as good as what your animal ate, people. If your animal is eating toxic food, or if your animal is eating, or I'm sorry, is being shot up with every synthetic hormone known to man to make it grow faster, with every antibiotic, with every antifungal, every everything to, to get it to grow faster and to not be sick in the feedlot, then you're getting every single bit of that. Not only are you getting that, your unborn baby is getting that and your growing children children are getting that. And it's really sad, and there's a whole lot of studies on this. So basically, it's not a matter of, you know, am I toxic? Well, I wonder if I'm toxic. Am I toxic? Heck yeah, you're toxic. We're all toxic. And we're just getting even more toxic as the years go by if we don't help our body detox on its own, whether you do it through simply your diet which would be ideal. That's the best way to detox, right? Eat all the foods, the curcumin, the cruciferous vegetables, you know, all the foods that are going to help your body detox on its own, that are going to make sulfur. Sulfur is part of the uh, phase two liver detox that helps your body detox on its own to make things into fat, water soluble from fat soluble. Yeah. Yeah. If you could eat all your great foods and detox on your own, absolutely. That's the best way to do it. But not many of us can. Not many of us are that good or we have access to that clean of food. So, you know, prior to the Industrial Revolution, we really weren't this toxic at all. We weren't. I mean, we didn't have all the automated things. People were eating cleaner, leaner, fresher foods. And then the Industrial Revolution came along and we were able to, you know, refrigerate things, automate things, all the things that incre have increased our toxic load and our toxic burden in our body. Not only have we increased, increased our exposure to pollution, chemicals, electromagnetic fields. Oh my goodness, the computer you're watching this on right now. Um, you know, the toxins have helped lead to an increase in non-communicable diseases, including, but not exclusive to, cancer, neurodevelopment conditions, obesity, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease. I mean, and the list goes on and on and on. Did you know that most Americans, most Americans have hundreds, hundreds of chemicals in their urine and their blood? As per the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, their fourth national report on human exposure to environmental chemicals, okay? When they tested 212 chemicals, just 212 chemicals, all chemicals, all 212 were found in the blood and the urine of most Americans, all 212 chemicals. Okay. There was another study that was headed by the environmental working group, which I love the environmental working group. If you guys are familiar with environmental working group and you like them and you use them, hit your heart buttons because I'm going to tell you the environmental working group is spot on many times. They did a study in collaboration with Commonweal and what they did, these researchers, they were at two major laboratories. They found that 200 industrial chemicals and they found 200 chemicals and pollutants in the umbilical cord from 10 babies. This was a small study, 10 babies at two hospitals that were born between August and September in 2004. The test revealed a total. Now, they, this was in the umbilical cord. They took the blood out of the umbilical cord. They looked at the chemicals, what was in the umbilical cord. Listen to this. Test revealed a total of 287 chemicals in that group, just 10 babies. 
they found 287 chemicals in the umbilical cord. The umbilical cord of those 10 children were collected by the Red Cross after the cord was cut and then it was studied. Those umbilical cords harbored pesticides, consumer product ingredients, which could be anything, waste from burning coal, gasoline, and garbage. There were also antidepressants and benzodiazepines in those um, and birth control pills in the blood of those umbilical cords of just 10 babies. So our babies are born polluted already. Not only is their microbiome already disrupted, they've got all these chemicals in their body and it's just, it's just so sad to me. We are bombarded daily. I'm sitting under lights right now. I'm sitting in front of a computer that's plugged in. I usually have it unplugged as much as possible. I got a cell phone right beside me over here. Now it's not plugged in, but it is definitely over here committee, or committing, committing electromagnetic field uh, toxins, but it is heavy metals, pesticides, right? Pharmaceuticals, plasticizers, plastic, right? Flame retardants. This couch I'm sitting on, if it has a flame retardant on it, then it's toxic. <sighs> PCBs, solvents, solvents that are in your products. Solvents are things that break down that general, many times extract things. Where I really think about solvents is in CBD. I learned about solvents in CBD and I learned about how they extract the CBD. Our company, the one that we use, and there are many companies that use this process called CO2 critically extracted. It's where you use CO2 to extract. You use that as a solvent instead of, guess what they use for solvents in CBD oil? Gasoline, alcohol, um, all different kinds of solvents. I just went blank on them. But anyway, you, solvents contain a tremendous amount of toxins as well. So you got to be careful when you're buying your products. You've got to know how are they extracted? How's that oil extracted? If it's using solvents, what are they using over there? Okay, genetics plays a role. Now here's where we get into genetics. Ooh, I love genetics. Genetics plays a role in how your body detoxes, right? How well do you break down the toxins? How well do you methylate? Think MTHFR here, right? Methyl tetral hydrofolate reductase enzyme deficiency. That's the MTHFR deficiency. Um, they call it the MFR deficiency. And it basically, it's a genetic defect, or defect, a genetic, well, it's, it is a defect on MTHFR gene on how your body methylizes, how it makes methylfolate in your body. And it takes those minerals and it turns around and, you know, methylates them so you can make them in the active form. It takes folate, folate and makes it active so that your body can excrete it and uh, use it for detoxification. So there's lots of genetic ways, you know, your genetics controls a little bit of that. Your diet, your lifestyle, your environmental exposure are all associated with how well we detox naturally on our own. So we have three phases of detox that we're going to talk about briefly. Three phases, biotransformation, conjugation, and elimination. These are phase one, phase two, phase three. When you hear these people talk about phase one, phase two detox, some people say, oh, that's just a bunch of bunk. There's no such thing. Well, maybe, maybe not. The research doesn't hold up to that. It says that, you know, we have phase one, phase two liver detox. Phase one, this is when toxic molecules, right, from the outside world, most likely, possibly, or metabolites of our own body processes, right, get molecularly transformed into a different molecule. Bottom line, what this means is, this is the process in phase one where you break down fat soluble into water soluble, okay? Fat soluble, you're not gonna be able to excrete it as well. Water soluble, you're able to excrete it, whatever the toxin is. Free radicals are made in this phase. So during this phase, you can end up with a higher oxidative stress. This is why you have to have that amazing antioxidant glutathione in your body. Glutathione is important during phase one liver detox because it helps protect your body against 
oxidative stress. It is the master antioxidant glutathione is. If your provider doesn't check glutathione on you, you need to ask them to check glutathione. It's the one antioxidant that mops up all the free radicals in your body. Vitamin C is a great antioxidant. I mean, there's lots of great antioxidants out there, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, but glutathione is the master antioxidant. And during phase one, you need glutathione to, to help those free radicals from becoming damaging in your body during phase two. Phase one of a liver detox, we break it down from fat soluble to water soluble. In phase two, this is called conjugation. This is where the body turns the molecules into a less toxic molecule. We're continuing phase one by making a fat soluble, water soluble. It continues over there and it makes it into a water soluble form so that your body can eliminate it. You can eliminate it through the urine, through the bowels, through the skin. This is the largest organ on the body. So I am a huge proponent of, you know, eliminating it through the skin, through a sauna, eliminate it through the kidneys as well. During phase two, you need sulfur. You need sulfur, sulfur uh, foods that create sulfur. You need sulfur to create phase two. You need glycine. You need cysteine. These are, these are amino acids. You need taurine, glutamine, inositol, one of my favorites over there. Glutathione, N-acetylcysteine are all needed during phase two. Continuing to make the fat soluble into water soluble so that we can excrete it in phase three. Phase three is the actual excretion process, okay? This is when the body eliminates it through the urine, the feces, the sweat, the kidneys, I think even the lungs. I am a big fan during phase three of this, of getting in an infrared sauna. An infrared sauna or sweating at all. I mean, I, it doesn't have to be an infrared sauna. I'm just a big fan of an infrared sauna. But sweating in general. You could go sit in the sauna at the YMCA and sweat, okay? Don't let, ever let anybody tell you, even though I sell a far infrared sauna, don't let anybody tell you that, oh my gosh, you can't get in another sauna. Yes, you can. Just sweat. Just sweat it out. Sweat it out. It's a great way to release toxins for sure. All three phases require certain vitamins, certain minerals, antioxidants, and other nutrients, okay? In order for your body, to that liver, to go from phase one to phase two, to break down the fat soluble, turn it into water soluble, you've got to have all those vitamins and minerals that we were talking about. They need to be in sync for your program to work. And that's why I do love Metagenics 10 Day Detox because it is laid out specifically, has the research and the diet is phenomenal for helping create, for helping make, you know, the, uh, giving you the reactions that you need to make the antioxidants and to the mineral and have the minerals. And the detox shake is actually loaded with every stinking mineral known to man, all of your amino acids, your broccoli powder, your cruciferous, um, vegetables that are needed for making your sulfur, you know, sulfurization and all. So whatever it is that you're doing, just make sure that the program is loaded with the vitamins and the minerals that are needed. In phase one, you've got to have all your B vitamins and your, your folic acid, your antioxidants, your vitamin A, your vitamin C, your N-acetylcysteine, your glutathione, your vitamin D, your vitamin E, milk thistle, what's help? Thistle. I, I, I um, had a little lisp there on that milk thistle, in acetylcysteine, your quercetin, your bioflavonoids. That's all required in phase one. And those are just part of it. Phase two, you've got to have calcium deglucurate, which helps mop up estrogen in your body. I love that one. I love that. All your amino acids, your glutamine, lysine, glycine, carter, carter, uh, uh, taurine, all the things we just talked about, cruciferous vegetables, your sulfur metabolites, very important for detoxification, MSM, N-acetylcysteine. And then again, it's going to turn it into water. It's going to bring it out. It's going to eliminate it through the gallbladder, the bile, the bowels, the kidneys, the urine, the skin, the lungs. I'm telling you, it works. How do you know if you need, <clears throat> need a detox program? Well, are you tired? Are you fatigued? Do you have fibromyalgia? You know, do you have chronic pain, chemical sensitivities, skin conditions, boy, acne, rosacea, dermatitis, psoriasis? Those are all conditions that need to be detoxed. 
and you need to heal the gut on abdominal pain, bloating, gas, constipation, diarrhea, you know, just muscle aches, food allergies, food sensitivities, joint pain, insomnia. These are all symptoms of toxic buildup in your body. And it won't hurt you to try detox, you know, try a detox, one that's been proven. All right. Ultra clear. The, the thing about them and the reason I love them is, you know, Dr. Kalb, who I worked for for five years, he had used this detox for probably 10 years or more prior. So it's the first one that I was acquainted with. I still use it to this day because I think it's the number one on the market. It's $120 though. You know, it's not cheap for 10 days, but my gosh, you know, you get your, your, de your detox shake, which is what I'm drinking right here. Now, a lot of people don't like, this is not Smoothie King, by the way, people. This is a detox shake. This is a true medical food, all right? So it is designed to detox your body, to give you energy, to help you sleep, to get all your vitamins and minerals going, everything we've talked about, not Smoothie King. So it's medical food. I don't mind drinking it with just water. When I do it though, on the days that you can mix it with um, almond milk or coconut milk, or you can put berries or spinach in it, I always do that because it adds extra nutrients to it and it helps my body detox. Their 10 day detox, you get their big tin, their big tub of this with all the vitamins and minerals in it. You also have your AdvaClear, which helps your body detox phase one and phase two. It helps, it gives you the minerals and the vitamins and the amino acids that are needed. No, I don't think there's any amino acids in here. Yeah, the mineral and the vitamins that are needed for phase one to phase two. You've got your cookbook, all the things. So basically what they've done the last 25 years is they've dumbed it down to like detoxing for dummies. Day one, day two, day three. There's no guesswork on this if you chose to do it. They make it very simple. The key to any detox, in my opinion, whether you do this, whether you do some other detox, whatever is meal prep because you cheat when you're not prepared. And I don't know about you people, but I don't cheat with salmon and broccoli. That's for darn sure. I cheat with the gluten-free brownies that are in there or whatever it is that I can get my hands on. You cheat with what you're craving and your body craves what it's sensitive to. And for me, it's cheese. So you have to meal prep. You have to batch cook. You have to chop it, cook it, bag it, get it ready. All those things ahead of time. Okay. So, you know, what's a detox going to do? Those of you that have detoxed, tell me, you know, what have you experienced? I have way more energy and my hands don't hurt. Literally within day two, my hands stop hurting every single time. Now I detox in March and October every year. I have some patients who do it four times a year. They do it every time the season changes. That's fine. I mean, you're not gonna, you I mean, you know, four times a year is great. I'm just not gonna do it four times a year because I do drink the detox shake all during the week and I try to eat clean. You can't detox enough to fix a bad diet. I'm just telling you that. So you need to eat well and then detox occasionally is my thing. You know, you're going to have less migraines. You're going to improve your sleep. You're going to poop better. You're going to have more energy, clear headed. <gasps> That's unbelievable. Now it's not a weight loss. No detox is a weight loss. It's not a weight loss, right? I mean, it's just not, but you can't help but lose weight when you tighten up things. I mean, that's a fact. The thing is, I just think you have to prepare emotionally, physically, and mentally for any sort of detox, right? You've just got to get your head wrapped around the fact that garbage in equals garbage out. It's as simple as that. A detox program helps take toxins in your body, make them from fat soluble to water soluble, help your liver excrete them, and help your body work the way that it should work. It is as simple as that. I'm not going to go through all that book and all that because again, we've got multiple videos that sh show that. What are some tips when you do a detox program? Well, there's no caffeine on a detox program or, or, or on a really good detox program. There's not. You need to start weaning down now. If this is coffee and you drink coffee all day long, then you need to start cutting it down. Make it at half calf for darn sure or drinking one less cup plan for it because you will have a headache. Now, I don't have a headache anymore when I detox, but I just miss it because I love coffee. And there's no amount of dandelion tea out there that takes the place of coffee. I can tell you that. And you can have dandelion tea on it. Um, 
Wean down on coffee. Increase your hydration, man. Drink water like you've never seen, at least 64 ounces a day prior to that and all during it. Don't over scoop on it because you'll run out. Um, use a sauna for darn sure. Sweat, sweat, sweat. Some sauna, any sauna. I don't care. Find a sauna. Get in it. Eat plenty of food. Don't get hungry. Don't get hungry. You cheat when you're hungry. Take your food with you. Meal prep it. Okay. All right. If you choose to detox, the key, now don't skip this point, this part. If you chose to detox, in the back here, there's a website that says clearchangeprogram.com. Go to that website, clearchangeprogram.com. Sign up for their newsletter. Sign up for their emails. They send you an email every day with more recipes, tips, and tricks on that day. I mean, good Lord, it's 10 days. People, you can do anything for 10 days. If you do it, do a 28-day one. If you're really toxic, do the 28-day detox. It's gentler than the 10-day, and it ramps you up slower. It's three times more expensive, but it is gentler. So, again, it's not a question of are you toxic? It's how toxic are you? That's a little bit about a metabolic detox right there and some of the benefits of a metabolic detox and why we need to keep this liver over here detoxing is, is, is um, working the way it should, right? Because you weren't born this way. You weren't born with chronic fatigue or high blood pressure, most likely, or diabetes. Maybe you were born with diabetes or migraine headaches or heartburn or lupus like me or irritable bowel syndrome, we turn those on. And what your body turns on, you can turn off. A detox program a free few times a year for darn sure is not going to hurt you. And it just could help you. It's as simple as that. Now, that's a metabolic detox. We're going to kind of dip our toe into some other things here on things that create toxins in our body, right? Uh, Chemical-free products. So those of you that follow me at all on Facebook, because some of you will be watching this later on YouTube because you don't have Facebook. But if you do, I put a little poll out there today on what are some of the things that you all use to, or you've done some hacks, you know, in your, in your house and in your life to clean up products and your environment. Well, there's a million of them, which has prompted me to have to do a Sunday night service on all of this. But I'm going to go on into some things because it all Work. Yes, Wycliffe, West Vaco. Thank you, Pat. That's it. Wycliffe, the paper plant in Wycliffe. I totally forgot about that. What are some of the things that you have done, baby steps or not so baby steps, to clean up your environment around you? Because it's all connected here, right? So, some of the chemical free, some of you have used chemical free products, right? Like soap and detergents, cleaning products, dryer sheets, natural insect repellent weed killer, um, cotton eyeball, cotton eye uh, makeup remover pads or face pads. And I just ordered some today um, online, some organic charcoal, bamboo, cotton eye or makeup remover. I can't wait to try them. They're, they're cotton. So they're washable. I've never used washable ones. I just use the rounds that you would buy and they're loaded with bleach. All the baby things, nail polish remover. So my friend, Mary Chubinko said, she texted me this afternoon and said, you know, I'm looking at some of the products people are using and they're not the cleanest. And I'm like, yes, I know. I've already know. I've already noticed that. There's a thing called green washing. I want you to look it up, write it down, look it up, Google it. What is green washing? Well, it's basically where they're making it sound like it's clean and it's non-toxic and it's all natural and all that. And it's not at all. It's as toxic as toxic can be. So you have to be so, so careful. And you have to look up the, the never list. What is the list, Mary? I can't remember the name of it. The never list. Um, things that should never, ever be in your products at all. If you're going to eat clean, whether you're on a 10-day detox or you're just trying to clean up, say, I can only do one thing, Danny. I'm going to start cleaning up my food. Well, then you immediately have to go to the environmental working group and you have to look up the dirty dozen and the clean 15, right? The two, oh, let me see. The, the uh, 2021 is not out yet, but the 2019 one, for the third year in the row, spinach and strawberries are the top, are the top two. Uh, most toxic foods 
in the United States that are non-organic spinach and strawberries how many people eat spinach and strawberries every day I watch people just pick up traditional pesticide roundup ready spinach and strawberries every day in the grocery and I so want to say something but I, I don't because you don't know about people's budgets and all but you can go get cheap spinach at all these for that's organic but strawberries let me tell you how toxic strawberries are um, Strawberries have got multiple chemicals on them, but my handyman who helps me out here, when he first came to America, he was working in California in the strawberry fields. And he told me, he said, Danny, strawberries are no joke. I was telling him about the dirty dozen. He'd never heard of it. He said, when they spray strawberries in the strawberry fields, they would make the pregnant women and the children leave and go to other fields and not work in those fields for, I think he said three days. Don't hold me to that. They spray the strawberries and they put these tents up around strawberries. So those chemicals stay in there. There's no breathing, but which means it's also not getting out. It's just soaking in those strawberries. And then they pull those, those um, covers up or whatever it is after that. And then they do whatever. And then they spray them again and they make the women and children leave. That's how toxic strawberries are. He said he wouldn't need a strawberry even before he knew about organic. He would not eat a strawberry for any amount of money. In the United States that is a traditionally grown strawberry strawberry spinach kale nectarines apples grapes those are all at the top do you know that multiple samples of kale which is number three on the list showed 18 different pesticides 18 different pesticides on traditional kale this is through the environmental working group and then you've got your clean 15 now look them up we're not going to go over these but um these are do you know that more than 70% of the clean 15 fruit and vegetable samples had no pesticide residues at all? So this is the real deal here. So avocado, sweet corn, pineapples, peas, onions, cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, three of the big cruciferous vegetables that you're needed for the uh, sulfur reactions and to create all of the antioxidants in your body. Those are on the clean 15. If you can't afford it, you don't have to buy those organic because they are cleaner than all the other things, than the other dozen out here. Environmental Working Group, it's free. Look at it online. They have a free app, The Dirty Dozen. They also have one called Skin Deep, which we're getting ready to talk about. Okay. Some of the hacks that you guys have done, you know, deodorant. Absolutely. I switched my deodorant over a couple of years ago, but I could never find anything that really worked for me. And then I found Smarty Pits. Now we have Smarty Pits, so just disclaimer here, we have this in our office, but I found Smarty Pits, not in my office or to sell in the office. I found it in North, uh, North Carolina when I was at a trip and I bought it. Oh my gosh, this is the best deodorant. This is their brand new teen line. And we got, I think there's five or six different flavors that came in. This is watermelon. We've got all different ones that have come in that are the teen line. But we have the entire line. Every one they make, we have, and it is, completely non-toxic. This gal's mom had breast cancer and she developed, and we know that the number one spot for breast cancer is in the armpit, right? It's called the tail of Spence up here. Well, what's in your deodorant? Aluminum, uh, a metal, right? And so that could be associated maybe with breast cancer. So I'm a huge fan of Smarty Pits. If you don't live locally, go online, try to find Smarty Pits. Um, I think they work great and you don't stink. They come in these little bitty travel sizes too that I take with me. I gave them for Christmas this year as well. Deodorant, something you gotta clean up. People talked about that. A whole house water filter. Who's bought a whole house filter or who's bought a Berkey or just an under the tap water filter or a really great filter on their refrigerator? I was just gifted, get this, a whole house water filter by my office. And this is from the water store over there. It's a whole house Pure Master. I don't know a lot about Pure Master, but it's their good one. And then I am going to buy myself the Fluoride Master Premium Whole House Fluoride Water filter, tr Filtration System that goes with it. But the, the Pure Master one that they got me filters out the hormones in the water and the pharmaceuticals in the water. Fluoride is a different deal. It's It apparently requires a whole lot of other processes, so it's a separate filter. I can't wait. I will let you all know. 
I have wanted one of these for years and I never could afford it. And I feel so blessed to be able to have this now. And I'm, the girls gave me this at the office for Christmas and what amazing, what an amazing gift. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. And our water, we have antidepressants, birth control, uh, Xanax, Valium, uh, all just benzodiazepines, all kinds of things are in our water. Do you know that chlorine, so we need a water filter that filters out chlorine, and this one does. Chloroform is released when chlorinated water is heated. Fluoride as well, as well as other chemicals when the water's heated. And you know, here we are, I filter my, my refrigerator, but I stand under the shower every day, getting all those chemicals in my on my skin. And I lay in a bathtub probably three or four times a week and I lay in there for 30 minutes or maybe an hour and I'm soaking in all those chemicals. A water filter, if you have a great water filter, then tell us what you got up here because I'm through, I wanna know all about it. Uh, consider not coloring your hair. Now, look at those roots right there. I'm about 70% gray, my hairdresser tells me. I've cleaned up everything and now I'm getting ready to clean up my water. I have not, not colored my hair. I'm not there yet. We use a really great product from Europe called Cune that has less toxins in it, but it's still a chemical. And so I get that and I don't want any gas, I mean any gas, any um, uh, flack off of that because I'm trying over here. I'm trying everything else. Clean up. I've got a lot of patients who said, or not, not necessarily patients, people, they've cleaned up their makeup. I use Crunchy. I think it's the best. I used Beauty Counter for years. Crunchy is even cleaner than Beauty Counter, guaranteed. When you read through and you look, but if you're using Beauty Counter and you can't go to Crunchy or for whatever reason, Beauty Counter is certainly better than what I've used for years. Maybelline, Estee Lauder, Estee Lauder, Lancome, all of that. Crunchy has all that never, or they don't have any of those never, Never nines. I can't remember, Mary, what it's called. They don't have any of that. Mary Chubanko is my rep for that. I have nothing to do with Crunchy, but I have their makeup, their lipstick, their eyeshadow is unbelievable. I, and I am talking non-toxic. And it's owned by two nurse practitioners, which I am thrilled about. But cleaning up your makeup, right? Your mattresses. Many of you mentioned mattresses. I bought an organic, I bought two organic mattresses. The last two years, I have an avocado mattress on my bed that I sleep on. And then the guest room now has an organic mattress from the sleep store down in Franklin. And I cannot remember the name of that mattress to save my life. But those mattresses are off gassing chemicals, right? And where do you sleep? Right on top of that mattress. So you've got to make sure your waterproof mattress pad too does not have all those chemicals in it. That's a big deal. Carpet, new furniture, new clothes. New clothes are off-gassing all kinds of things. I have made a commitment. That was one of my goals, if you all saw it, for 2020. I am not buying one piece of clothing that's brand new for the first six months. Now, I'm going to see if I can make it into the last six months. I'm going to just shop at thrift stores or online at you know places, Poshmark, or uh, those places that have secondhand clothes. Goodwill, my favorite, Grace. Uh, Grace, uh, Min Grace Works Ministries over here. Tell me your favorite thrift stores. I love to shop at thrift stores. Um, I don't have to shop at thrift stores now, but I know that those clothes have already been washed and done and all that. So anyway, I'm excited about it. I'm going to try it. I've never done it for six months at all. Your pots and pans and your utensils. Have you cleaned those up? Are you still cooking with non-stick Teflon pans? Please tell me no. Cast iron. I use my cast iron every single day. I use my Le Creuset. They make other things that aren't as expensive as Le Creuset. Mine were Christmas gifts from my kids through the years, um, which are ceramic coated cast iron. Stainless steel. I love my stainless, stainless steel. I love my new air fryer. My air fryer is cast iron. I mean, I'm sorry. It's ceramic coated, no Teflon in it. Those are all hacks. One thing at a time. Get rid of the toxins, toxin toxic um, uh, utensils, okay? Go to wooden spoons that aren't coated or aren't treated. Go to stainless steel spatulas and flat and all of that. Um, what else? What else? Uh, personal care products, right? We're talking tampons 
and pads, some of the most toxic things you can put, and where are you putting it? In the most vascular organ in the body, practically, the vagina, which is loaded with all kinds of moisture, mucus, membranes. So I spent 40 years putting Roundup and bleach in my vagina, furious over that. I had no idea how toxic those were. And then the plastic app applicators. I used the cardboard ones, but I'm sure that was equally as bad. So, you know, go to a, uh, diva cup or a menstrual cup. This is a dot cup that we have at the office. They make a, a diva cup. This is medical grade silicone. No bleach, none of that lasts for 10 years and it's $34. Do you know how much cheaper that is than pads and tampons? And you take it out. My patients who use a cup swear by it. I never got to use this because I didn't know about it. I stopped having a period before, but this cup right here, my patients say their period cramps go down all of that. Other little hacks, your cleaning supplies. If you're using uh, Mrs. Myers or whatever it is, Myers Clean Day, there's a green washing company right there. That stuff is not clean. Just look at the back of it. It's not. Thieves is what I use. This is from Young Living. It smells amazing. In fact, I got to order some this week. It's almost out. I use it for everything. I use it for my floors, my countertops. I use it for, for well, basically everything. Uh, lots of patients mentioned doTERRA, cleaning things, uh, vinegar, water, baking soda, lemon juice. There's not much that those things will not clean. What else? I put all kinds of stuff up here. Norwax. Oh my gosh. I love Norwax. And you know, I don't use it enough. And You just need water and it cleans everything. Norwax, I need to learn more about Norwax, actually. I don't know enough, but these are my Norwax cloths. I have my fruits and vegetables in my bags that my former nurse, Rochelle, gave me before she moved to Florida. These are non-toxic bags. If anybody has an a idea and a hack for plastic bags, let me know. What have you done for resealable, reusable plastic bags? I looked online today on Amazon and they were like $15 a bag. And I was like, holy cow. Um, I do use, I, I've got a friend who has a company. I don't use those beeswax covers that go over. I need to do that for the top of my bowls. But I've switched everything over to glass, really thick, nice glass bowls, um, as in Pyrex bowls that have the lids on them. So they stack easily in the, in the freezer. Also, other ways that create toxins in us, electromagnetic fields. Now, I'm not getting into this because there's a ton of information out on the internet, and we have three videos on electromagnetic fields. Other ways you're getting toxins in your body, sitting in those heated car seats. You turn those heated seats on every morning on your car, and it's putting nothing but EMFs right up your bum there all the way through your body. So Vicki Warren, who's the electrical engineer we brought in, says, turn them on and then turn it off. Okay. Just like if you had a heated mattress pad, which is horrible sleeping on that all night long, just turn it on, turn it off kind of thing, which doesn't work all night long, but electromagnetic fields, your phones, your computers, your lights, your wireless routers, all those things you need to clean up. You can't get away from those toxins during the day, but your home and your bedroom need to be a sanctuary. Simple as that. Grass-fed organic meats as best you can, as best you can. Use the farmer's market and know your farmer. Follow the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. Eat fish and eat a lot of fish, but only eat fresh water, cold water, deep water fish, and know where it came from, no farmed fish. Some say that 90% of our toxin exposure to certain chemicals such as PCPs and dioxins actually come from the food we eat. So you have got to tighten up that diet. 35% of all the foods we purchase in the United States supermarkets have measurable pesticide residues, which make its way into our body, 35%. One or more pesticides on 70.3% of fruits and vegetables that are in the food, in the market. One or more pesticides. We have between five and 13 different pesticides tainted one in every 10 fruit or vegetable samples that were checked during this study. 
25 million pounds of antibiotics a year are fed to our livestock. Listen to that, 25 million pounds of antibiotics a year are fed to our livestock and the animal feed, which is highly sprayed with chemicals as well. And those animals are not getting the good corn. They're getting the corn that's molded and that's mildewed and that's loaded with aflatoxin, okay? They're not getting the good corn. Animal feed contains high quantities of fat, which allow for the storage of those fat soluble, soluble chemicals and antibiotics to store in those animals' bodies. And then they are stored in your body when you eat them. They are then passed on to the human digestive system and the body when you eat those products. You better know your farmer, people, and you better not be buying your red meat from a place, and I'm not gonna mention all the big ones out there, that are covered in saran wrap or wrap that's off-gassing bisphenol A and all the gases of the plastic, and then styrofoam as well. So it's coming from the bottom, it's coming from the top, and it's shipped and it's packed in styrofoam and plastic. I can't do it anymore. I just can't do it because I just know. Some more of the life hacks, you guys. Norwax, Crunchy, Beauty Counter, Glass Containers, Berkey water filters. I don't know what um, Austin Air is. It's an air filter. Air in our house is a very big contaminant for our bodies, to our lungs and our kidneys and our liver. The Austin Air, I can't remember who mentioned that, but they said it was phenomenal. Jen Brown says the force of nature, and I think force of nature is actually water. I'm not quite sure what that is. Young Living. Um, a clearly filtered, filtered water pitcher. I don't know what that is. Attitude, attitude, living laundry dish, shampoo, and body wash. I've never heard of that one. Poofy Organics, Gina Allen says. Alatura Moisturizer, Deanna Hensley uses. Branch Basics Cleaning, Mary Chabinko uses Branch Basics. And I want to know what that is. I've never heard of it. Scout and Cellar Wine. People, you're cleaning up your red meat. You're eating wild caught fish, you're eating all the cruciferous vegetables your body can stand, you detox every four or five months, maybe once a year, maybe twice a year, but then you're drinking, which I don't have any wine tonight, but then you're drinking a big old glass of red wine at night, four or five, maybe seven nights a week, and you're putting all the round up, the glyphosate, the sulfites, all the sugar, all the toxins back into your body because you're not drinking clean crafted wine. I am actually going to the first annual Scout and Cellar Clean Crafted Wine Conference in Houston, Texas this month, at the end of the month. And I am so excited to learn about Clean Crafted Wine. You know I sell Clean Crafted Wine, so that's a disclosure. But I want to tell you something. I absolutely feel so much better when I drink that wine. Now, I don't drink a ton of wine. I don't drink every night. I certainly don't drink a glass every night. But I feel good when I drink that wine and I know that I'm putting something clean back in my body. Cloth napkins. Switch over to cloth napkins. I did that years ago. People think, thought I was nuts years ago. Um, this is not a cloth napkin. But I use cloth napkins every single night. You rarely see me use a paper towel or a regular napkin. Um, I use cloth napkins, napkins and I use my grandmother's silver every every day because not i've used my grandmother's silver for 22 years gorham chantilly silver and i don't even have another i don't have a flatware set but cloth napkins don't use a straw be a no straw table when you go out you just tell the waitress no straws use a stainless steel straw or a glass straw i couldn't use a glass straw i would break a glass straw in a heartbeat so um no plastic really try to decrease the plastic use in your house. And I really want somebody to share with me really great uh, substitutes for plastic bags. I don't use a ton of plastic bags, but I do use them because I chop up a lot of things here. There's so many life hacks out there. Coffee's another one of them. You know, your coffee's loaded with mold. And so if I drink coffee, I do drink coffee. I drink organic coffee and I'm actually getting ready to drink some purity coffee. They've reached out to me and want me to test their, their coffee and they are an all organic line. So I'll let y'all know about that. But here's the thing. You can't live in a bubble, people. You can't. You have to live your life. You have to, you know, get out, enjoy your life, go have fun with your friends and family. 
but you have to do the best you can, right? You have to eat well, sleep well, move well, poop well, decrease stress. You have to have community. We cultivated community yesterday morning at the dotted line when I think 16 or 17 people showed up for breakfast at 7.30. Only two people, I think, got there after 7.30 and, and that's fine. But I mean, they were up and they were there cultivating community at 7.30 in the morning. Do whatever it takes. These are all six steps that I think are really important to, to healing. And then you've got to live the cleanest, most non-toxic life you can. I never once, my mother, my father, never mentioned to me about living a clean, non-toxic life. My mom smoked still to this day, like a freight train, two cigarettes at a time. She drank quite a bit as well. And I found out a whole lot lately. I mean, just a whole lot more than I thought she ever did. I mean, my parents just didn't live a clean, they just didn't know anything about it. And, and they never taught me this. This is something I've had to learn on my own. And when you know better, you have to do better people. So one baby step, don't be overwhelmed, Elizabeth Ragsdale on here. Don't be overwhelmed. Pick one thing and clean it up. It could be anything. Change your toothpaste. Oh man, I was going to show you my toothpaste. I can't. It's already been an hour. Um, one thing, change your toothpaste. And then next month, change something else. Don't put dryer sheets in the dryer because they're toxic. Get a new laundry detergent. Just one thing at a time. I guarantee you people, if you've been on this journey with me for the last 10 years, like I have, you, you, you are way better than you used to be. You may not be where you need to be, but you are way better than you used to be. And you're not going around that same old mountain over and over again. You're doing better. You're putting one foot in front of the other. And that's all we can ask. But I think if you sit back and you're not so hard on yourself and you look at just what you did in 2019 to educate yourself, if you watch these videos in 2019, you got a lot of education. Now, what you did with it is up to you. I don't know what you did. If you didn't do anything with it, that's your own problem. That's on you. But baby steps. If it's just change your water, just drink out of glass. Start that. That's a huge huge thing. So please don't beat yourself up. This is an expensive journey as you, and don't walk in there and pull out everything in your cabinets and throw them out. As you run out of toxic foods, just don't bring them back in. You know, it's as simple as that. Uh, it really, really is. So anyway, continue educating yourself. Watch webinars, watch podcast, listen to podcasts, go on, um, YouTube and watch videos and sign up for all the best podcasts out there. I mean, I may do a Sunday night service one night with just all of my favorite things. Not that I am the end all be all for darn sure, but would y'all be interested in that? Like my favorite podcasts, my favorite videos, my favorite webinars, my favorite people, my favorite books, my favorite products. I mean, if you're interested in that, gosh, and if I could get Motley to do it, that'd be great. I'd love to do that. Just baby steps, all right? But listen, next week, this is exciting. If you have Hashimoto's, our Hashimoto's meeting is this Friday, 6.30 at night. Uh, Victoria Bailey is going to be teaching us on uh, breast thermography, full body thermography, and lymphatic drainage. You do not want to not be there. You do not want to miss it. It's under events on Danny Williamson Wellness. If you're coming to it, click coming because I need to know how many people are coming because Allen Hill Pharmacy provides the gluten-free snacks. If you want to bring a snack, do it. It's this Friday night. Next Sunday, Dr. Derek Myers is going to be sitting here beside me and I'm so excited. He's coming in from Heath, Ohio, and we're going to be talking about the fatty liver epidemic, rising liver enzymes, rising rates of um, fatty liver and cirrhosis and um, non-alcoholic fatty liver, all of that and what we can do about it. So I'm really excited about that. January the 16th is our very first Six Steps to Healing class at the office. If you want to just, don't need to see me, but you want to kickstart and you want to start on my six steps that I do, Allie's teaching that class seven o'clock that night. I think it's $35. Don't hold me to that. You also get a free bottle of Metagenics. Um, vitamin D3 with that. You sign up online at dannywilliamson.com. 
the same place that you need to sign up for our newsletter, dannywilliamson.com, because Tuesday we're going to have a newsletter come out on this video, as well as the two other detox videos that I've done in the past. But we send a newsletter out every week. And if you want to know what's going on, what's happening in the office, you need to sign up for that, okay? And as usual, we are open on Saturdays now, and it has been such a great, you know, when you listen to your people, they tell you what they want. And if you just listen, I mean, it works. And so we have just been blessed on Saturdays. And I try to work those with Jackson, which means I'm working another day every week. But I have such a good time with Jackson in there. And it's fun getting to work with your kiddo. But the supplement store is open. It's open to the public. Anybody can come in. And I love it because I get to meet people in there during that time that I wouldn't normally see during the office day when I'm seeing patients. And so it's a public store. Anybody can come in anytime and we're loaded. I had a gal come in yesterday. She said, this is the best supplement store I've ever been in. Whoa. And it's tiny. I mean, it's not even like eight by eight hardly. It is really little, but I have really done a, I've worked hard. And also people look here. I am now boxing. I go tomorrow for my second class and it's privates, like, or kind of privates, isn't it? Nine round. If anybody wants to go in Franklin, sign up. Their first class is free. And I am loving it. I am so sore. I can't even move today, hardly. My upper body is killing me. And I'm also looking right here. Look at this gorgeous necklace my friend Nadine gave me. Oh, my. Oops. Whoops. Whoops. There we go. Isn't it, isn't it beautiful? She made it for me, and she gave it to me yesterday. And I appreciate it. She's on here. Thank you, Nadine, for my for my beautiful necklace. But guys, it's a new year. It's a new decade, right? It's the roaring 20s. I can't wait to see from, I'll be 54 January the 18th. So from 54 to 64, I cannot wait to see what happens. I am really excited and, and just, I'm always excited anyway, but I really get excited at the beginning of a new year. And I realize the momentum doesn't stay you know, is exciting and bad things happen, but by gosh, pick yourself back up, right? Our bodies are designed to work and I appreciate you all. I'm going to convince Mary Chubinko to come on here and teach us about skin and beauty and toxins and greenwashing. And I'm going to, I don't think she really wants to, but I really want her to. I appreciate you all. Have a great week. Get out there, make it great. Find something to be grateful for. Find something to be thankful for. If you don't like your situation, then change it. I'm challenging you to change it in 2020. If it means quitting your job, finding new friends. Um, you may have to leave a marriage. I mean, I don't know if there's something bad there and there's abuse. I mean, you have the power within you to do it. God gave you the power. And I'm just telling you, if something's not right, if you don't like your health, if you don't like the way you feel, then change it. Quit moaning and groaning and carrying on about it. You are not your sickness. You are not your bad marriage. You are not your bad job. You are not your bad kids. You are not any of that. You are bigger and better than that. And God designed you to be 150%. And if you aren't, a big piece of that may be on you. So, Pull your bootstraps up. Let's do this together. Let's get out there. Let's fight and let's live the best life God designed us to because this shit's not rocket science. I'm telling you. All right, people. I love you. I could talk all day. Love you. Oh my gosh, it went over. I was going to go for 45 minutes. Have a good night, people. Appreciate you. Share this video. Harlan, you were good.